Uncle Cliff, uh, what we called him, I had a short stint with the New Jersey Nets, and he was on that team with Richard Jefferson and Jason Kidd, and uh, he was always like a big brother to me, uh, especially while during that time I was trying to come back and, and play after my injuries and kept trying to tell me to fight all the time. And, and over the weekend when I heard the news, and I think we've all been in this place, Key, um, and to anybody listening, if you ever had somebody reach out to you and maybe you were busy at that juncture of your life, you know, kids, family, work, and you're like, you know, I'll get back to that person. Um, that's what happened to me with Cliff. Uh, I, I didn't hit him back, and uh, I think this weekend, hearing that news really forced me to stop in my tracks, and uh, I started going back and looking at some of the things that he had said on social media in his last tweet, actually. He had tweeted to me, joking around with me, because I was wearing a turtleneck in the summer, because it was a bet that Jalen and uh, Jalen Rose and Maria Taylor and I all have going on NBA Countdown with Paul Pierce, and uh, I didn't get back to him. And I, if there's anything that I think coming out of all this stuff, I obviously... You know, the energy has been really weird in 2020. It's been very chaotic and it's depressing. Um, but I tried to find a way, like, you know, tell those people that you love that you love them. Regardless of what the hell is going on, take a second, allocate time throughout the midst of your day, even if for how busy you are, to reach out to the people that have reached out to you or think about the people that maybe you haven't reached out to. I mean, just with Black Mamba, Black Panther that's passed away, with Cliff, the... the Thousands of people that have passed away in 2020 with this pandemic. Yeah. These are the lessons that we need to continue to preach and tell each other about to make sure that we tell the ones we love that we love them or the ones that maybe we have frustration with that we forgive them or that we forgive ourselves. It's so important. Absolutely. It is. And, and it, you know, like you said, you, there's people that you may not have conversations with in such a long time or you know, you pick up the phone and you say, oh, I'm going to get back to him. And then the next thing you know, you don't get back to him and you're faced with something and you feel a certain type of way. But 2020 has been wild. It's, it's, it's just been wild since January, man. It's nonstop. You just wanted to hurry up and get over with. Let let the end of the year come. Let's move into 2021 as quick as possible. Yeah, we still have four months to go in 2020. Jay, you're so four? right. Four? We still got four months September, to go? October, November, December. <sighs> Take a deep breath. 180,000 people have died of the coronavirus. David Stern, another luminary in sports that we lost this year in the basketball community. And by the way, just Coach you Lute mentioned Olson it. From Coach Arizona. Yep. Lute Olson last week, absolutely. Rumors right now around John Thompson. Yep, John Thompson, the first black man to win the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship as a coach. It's Georgetown's only national championship in basketball and a forerunner and a legend in the sport. We're working on some reporting with regards to that. I just want to mention, you mentioned the tweet, August 10th at 7.57. Clifford Robinson at Uncle Cliffy 30. Jay Williams is wearing a turtleneck in the summer, two exclamation points. Am I missing something? <laughs> hashtag NBA bubble, hashtag NBA, hashtag Wrong, And I want to mention, you know this, Jay, but part of the reason he was named Uncle Cliffy is he had this great, you should look this video up, great celebration dance during the 1992 <laughs> Western Conference Finals. We're old guys, so we remember this, but if you're young, go on there. He had like a celebratory dance. I have no rhythm, but he had like a celebratory Really? <laughs> <laughs> Another obvious fact I didn't need to state. Um, but he had a great celebration dance during the 1992 Western Conference Finals. It showed his playful demeanor. He was so positive. He ended up getting involved in a lot of businesses post-basketball. He was very open in saying that marijuana helped him throughout his 18 years in the NBA to just get through the rigors of playing this game. And he continued to be a positive light for the Blazer organization all the way up to his death at the age of 53.